All right, gang, so right now we're going to do something that's that maybe a little unnerving, a little scary for you guys, but don't worry about it. We're going to go through it step by step. So now we're going to go through IP addressing, what IP addresses are, how they work, subnetting, and a few other things. Just some things to get you really comfortable with um, IP addressing. Now, there is a little bit of math. Little, little. Little bit of math. But we're going to go step by step um, and make sure that you guys feel super comfortable. So, first thing. What is this? So that's 171.168.16.130. What is this? What is this called? Perfect. That is an IP address. This is an IP address. Okay, gang, this is an IP address. This right here is a IPv4. This is an IP version 4 address. On the test, we're going to pretty much primarily be dealing with version 4 IP addresses, so we're only going to go over version 4 IP addresses in this lecture. So, version 4. This IP address, this IP address, has 32 bits. So this IP address has 32 bits. How do we figure that out? Each one of these is called an octet. We got, I'm gonna change the color up on you, get fancy. So each number is called an octet. We have one, two, three, four, octets. We have four octets. Octet, like an octagon, is eight. All right, it represents eight. So, eight here, eight here, eight here, eight here. We have a version four IP address, 32 bits. Eight here, eight here, eight here, eight here. Eight, 16, 24, 32. So a version four IP address is 32 bits. A version 4 IP address is 32 bits. All right? So let's go all the way back to the beginning. What is this? Great. That's an IP address. That is a version 4 IP address. Each one of these things is an octet. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. 8 times 4 equals 32. So this IP address is 32 bits. Now, the next thing. Each bit has a value. There's eight bits in every octet, and each bit has a value, okay? Those values are 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. How many numbers is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the foundation game. We got the IP address. We got 4 octets. We got 8 bits in every octet. And each bit has a value. These are the bit values. Commit this to memory. Make sure you commit that to memory. That's super important, never changes. The bit values are always those eight numbers. If we ever forget, all you have to do, start at one and then double all the way up until you get to 128. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. 32 plus 32 is 64. 64 plus, 30, uh, plus 64 is 128. Now, what we're going to do right now is actually convert this decimal IP address into binary. What is binary? Binary is actually what computers talk in. They talk in ones and zeros. That's how they know what the IP address is. They know how and where to send data. All right, so we're going to actually convert this IP address into binary. 
gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit, take a snapshot of this, and then we're gonna move on ahead and actually convert this IP address into binary. All right, gang, so we'll go ahead and keep with the same IP address, but we're gonna write out the bit values first. Whenever we're asked a question about subnetting, how many hosts, how many subnets, converting decimal to binary, you can always find the answer inside of the bit values. If you write down the bit values, you'll be able to find the answer. So, pop quiz, what are the bit values? Okay, great, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. You can do it, you can go the other way, I just, I go left to right all the time, but it's just, you start at 1, and go all the way up to 128. These are the bit values. So, our IP address was 1, was 1, 71, 168, dot 16.130. So all we're trying to do now is convert this into binary. All we're doing is seeing if bits are on or bits are off. If bits are on or bits are off. And just remember, the only answer can be either a 1 or a 0. A 1 represents that that bit is on, a 0 represents that that bit is off. For example, on your remote, um, on your phone, um, on any power button, a lot of times there's a 1 inside of a 0, and that's all that's representing, is on and off. So, to keep it simple, we're going to do the first octet, we're going to convert this into binary. How do we do that? The first thing that we have to do, all we have to do is ask ourselves, does this bit value go into this? One more time. Does this bit value go into this? If this is lower than this, then it can go into it. If you have um, $171, I can borrow $128 from. So I actually space it out a little bit just so you guys would be able to see it a little bit better. So once again, our IP address is 171, 168, 16, 130. So all we have to do now is just convert to binary. All we gotta do is convert to binary. So, with that being said, it's real simple. We go from the bit values, we always go from left to right, which is the reason that I write it out from left to right. We go from left to right, from left to right. If this bit value is less than that number in the octet, all we do is subtract that number from this number. All we do is subtract 128 from 171. Since we know that 128 is lower than 171, since we know that we can get 128 out of 171, that bit is turned on. Just remember that a 1 equals on, a 0 equals off. So, we know that the 128 bit is turned on. We're going to signify that by putting a 1. 128 minus 171, what is that? 128 minus 171. What does that leave over? What does that leave over? 128 minus 171. Perfect. That leaves 43. 43. Good. All right, so is 64 higher or lower than 43? Is 64 higher or lower than 43? Perfect. It's higher, so we don't have to do anything. That bit is going to be turned off. That bit is going to be turned off. So we got 1, 0. Now we still got 43 left, and we're just going down the line until we can find a number that is lower than 43. So can 32 go into 43? Of course. So we minus 
32 from 43, and that would be how much? That would be 11. That would be 11. So the 32 bit is turned on or off. Perfect. It's turned on. Is 16 higher or lower than 11? It's higher. Perfect. So we're going to signify that by zero. Is 8 higher or lower than 11? Perfect. It's lower. So we're going to subtract 8 from 11. But we're going to signify that that bit is on by putting on uh, putting a 1 right there. Minus 8. That's going to bring us to 3. I'm going to move this up a little bit just to make sure that you guys know. Just, so, just to make sure that you guys can see. So 11 minus 8 is 3. That's what we have left. That's what we got left. So is 4 higher or lower than 3? Perfect. It's higher. So we know we signify that by 0. Is 2 higher or lower than 3? Lower. So we minus that by 2. That leaves us with 1 which means that this is going to be turned on and then this is going to be turned on just because one, you can take one out of one. So to bring it full circle, this IP address in binary is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. Perfect guys, you did it. Now I'm about to do one more. I'm going to have you guys do it just to make sure that you got the process, don't think too hard, okay? Do not think too hard. Don't think too hard. Don't think too hard at all. Don't think too hard at all. So, if we were trying to convert the third octet, the third octet into binary, this is the third octet. 16 is the third octet. If we were trying to convert that into binary, don't think too hard, gang. What would that look like? What would the third octet look like in binary? Let's go through it. Is 128 higher or lower than 16? Higher. Perfect. So we know that's zero. 64 higher or lower? Perfect. Zero. 32 higher or lower? Zero. Perfect. 16 is equal to it. So 16 minus 16 equals zero, right? So we're going to turn this on, minus 16, leaves us with 0, so the rest of these will be 0, 0, 0, 0. The third octet in binary looks just like that. Now remember on the actual exam, if they want you to convert from decimal to binary or from binary to decimal, you're going to have 32, okay, if you're going from decimal to binary, you're going to have 32 ones and zeros. Okay, you're going to have 32 ones and zeros. You're going to have eight ones and zeros in the first octet, eight here, eight here, eight here, which would be 32 ones and zeros. All right, converting decimal to binary. All right, so work on this. If you don't get it right now, it's going to take repetition, right? Because like a lot of times you see numbers, get excited uh, or get terrified, one of the two. And um, just the repetition, keep on going through this and you'll feel a lot bit better. A lot bit better. Who says that? A lot better. Not a lot bit better. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go from decimal to binary. We understand the octets, so on and so forth. Next thing we're going to actually do is going to solve for hosts. We're going to solve for hosts. All right, gang, now we're going to get into solving for hosts. Now, when we say solving for hosts, what that means is every device on the network is going to be considered a host. Every device on the network is going to be considered a host. So when you're solving for hosts, you're actually trying to figure out how many IP addresses, how many devices can I actually fit on this network. Just remember that host equals the device, whether it's a cell phone, laptop, PC. But if you got 60 hosts on your network, then that means that you got 60 devices on your network. So we're going to use the same IP address the whole time just to not avoid any confusion. So we already converted from decimal to binary. Now we're going to actually solve and see how many hosts can we actually fit on this network. And we're going to add um, a new little feature and explain it to you guys. So IP address is 171.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
16.130. And I'm going to add one other thing. Slash 25. This slash is called the cider. The slash is called the cider. C-I-D-R. The cider. So, with that being said, this is a version 4 IP address. We already know that. And all this number is signifying, right? All that number is signifying is that 25 bits out of the 32 belong to the network and we can't take any IP addresses, we can't take any devices from the network side. Slash 25 one more time just means that 25 of the bits out of 32 are taken. 25 bits out of the 32 are already taken. All right, so 25 of the bits out of the, 30, out of the 32 are already taken. So, as always, what is our first step? What is our first step? Perfect. Our first step is always to write out the bit values. And what were the bit values again? Perfect. 1, 28, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and one. Those are the bit values. Those never change. Those never change. And this is going to help us out tremendously, right? I'm going to give you guys a quick little hack, um, a quick little uh, feature, a quick little cheat code um, to show you how to solve for hosts very, very quickly if we're in the last octet. If we're in the last octet, then it's really easy to solve for how many hosts. How do I know we're in the last octet? Remember, 25 of the bits are already taken. 25 of the bits are already taken. So that means that 8, 16, 24, 25. If it's 24 or more, we know we're working inside of the last octet. Because remember, you can only fit, in the first three octets, you can only fit 24 bits. So if it's 24 or higher, it has to be in the last octet. So it's number 25 or 25, the 25th bit. So we just go ahead and go into the last octet. One more time, slash 25, 32 bits, eight, first octet, 16, second octet, 24, third octet, 25 in the last octet, all right? So to keep things super, 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 super simple, the question is how many hosts can we get from this IP address? Don't make it more complex than it has to be. So, all you have to do is take away two, take away two from the last bit value that's turned on, and then you'll be able to get how many hosts that you need. All you have to do is take away two from the host, and that's all that you need. All right, so all you gotta do is take away two from the last bit value that is on, and that's it. Why do we take away two? We take away one, for the host ID, we take away another one for the broadcast ID. The host ID is just whatever network you're actually on. All right, the host ID is the network that you belong to, and then the broadcast ID is what we use to actually talk to everybody and communicate on and off of our network. So, said all that to say this. What is the 25th bit value? What is the 25th bit value? Just remember, just a quick little quiz, quick little feedback, quick little uh, retake. Remember that these are the bit values. These bit values are inside of each one of these octets. All right? So it's eight bits in every octet. These bit values are inside of every octet. All right? So the first bit value in 171, or the first octet, is going to be 128. Does that make sense? The first bit value in the second octet is also going to be 128. The first bit value in the third octet is also going to be 128. The first bit value in the last octet is also going to be 128. So we got 8, 16, 24, 25. The 25th bit in the last octet is going to be the first bit value, if that makes sense to everybody. So just remember, this last octet is going to be bits 
25 to 32. All right. So the first bit value, if we take anything from it, is always going to be 128. All right. 25th bit value. All right. So, for example, first octet is 1 to 8. Second octet, 9 to 16. Third octet, 17 through 24. The 24. Nine. All right. So, if we're looking at this, to keep things super simple, the 25th bit value is going to be the first bit, 128. The 26th bit value is 64. The 27th bit value is going to be 32. You following me? You getting it? We're also, I'm doing it step by step, breaking it down, and then we're actually going to go back and do it again through the slides, just to make sure that, uh, this hits home, because I know a lot of times this can get confused and it can get scary, but don't worry about it. So the answer is 126, because the 25th bit value is 128. 128 minus 2 equals 126 hosts. Bam, we did it. So let's go through one more. Let's go through one more just to make sure that everything is all right. We're using the same uh, IP address, using the same cider, same everything. Well, actually, we're going to use a different cider. So that was for 25. Now let's have a cider of 26. Okay, if this was the 25th bit value, if all we have to do, if it's in the last octet, which we know because it's uh, 26, if all we have to do is take away 2 from the last bit value that's turned on, how many hosts can we get from this IP address with that cider? Perfect. The last bit value that's turned on is going to be 64. That's the 26th bit value. All we have to do 64 minus 2, because we've got to take away one for the host ID, one for the network ID. So we're ready to get 62 hosts from that network. Perfect game. So like I said, this is going to have to come through repetition. And like I said, it's super easy in the last octet. If you got a cider of 27, it's going to be 30. If you got a cider of 28, it's going to be 14. Got a cider of 29, it's going to be 6. Got a cider of 30, it's going to be 2. You'll never have a cider more than 30. All right, you never have a cider more than 30. Because look at this. If we have to take away 2 and the bit value is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. That will leave us with nothing. So it will be kind of pointless. So just remember, if we're in the last octet, 25 is 126. 64, excuse me, 26 is 62. 27 is 30. 28 is 14, 29 is 6, and 30 is 2. All we have to do is take away 2 from whatever the last bit value that is actually turned on. All right? Good job. All right, gang, so that works if it's in the last octet. 99% of the questions that you're going to get are going to be in the last octet. But I just want to give you guys a quick example of how to solve it if it's not in the last octet. So instead of having a cider of... 25 or higher, let's do a cider of, uh, let's see, let's do a cider of 23. Let's see what a cider of 23 will get us, okay? So remember, IP address was 171.168.16.130. We'll change the cider to 22. All right, we're going to change the cider from 22. So if it's not in the last octet, we can use um, a power chart, so 2 to the power of such and such, or 2 to the power of whatever it is, or we can just go from right to left. This is, so in essence, this is what it actually looks like. Since it's 22 bits, we know that the first octet can't do anything with that. Second octet can do nothing with that. Third octet is open, okay? So we got X, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, zero zero and then the last octet is completely open one two three four five six seven eight 
All right, so X, which is just representing that that octet is completely full. Second octet is completely full. The third octet isn't completely full, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six bits that are actually turned on and belong to the network, and we got two that belong to the host or that we can use for the host. The last octet is completely open. Quick cheat code, um, quick thing to think about is any octet, any octet can have 256 hosts, 256 hosts, 256 hosts. So when it was a slash 25, right? When it was a slash 25, we knew that it was 126. So on one of these bits were turned off, we knew that it was 126, right? So if we borrowed from the 25th bit, it was 126 hosts, 126 hosts. So to figure out how many hosts we can get if it's further back, further behind, or before the last octet, all we gotta do is go from right to left. All you do is double the number from right to left. So for example, we know 25 was 128. All right, we're not gonna take away two just yet. We know that slash 25 is 128. Slash 25 is 128. So slash 25 equals 128. And like I said, we're going from right to left. So let's move over one more. So if it was a slash 24, all we have to do is double the number prior to that, okay? 128 plus 128 is what? Perfect. 256. So, in this entire octet, this last octet, we can have 256 hosts. And that would be a slash 24. This last octet, if it was a slash 24, we have 256 hosts. But we're trying to get to 22, right? We're trying to get to 22. So, all we have to do is add the number before. Just remember that. So, if we got a slash 23, what's 256 plus 256? Perfect. 512. Now, we're at 22. So we borrowed all of these, borrowed this one, and borrowed that one. So what is 512 plus 512? Perfect. A thousand, I'm about to switch up colors on y'all. Slash 22 is a thousand 24 minus two, and that would be a thousand and 22. So the answer to this is, a thousand and twenty-two hosts. So like I said, we're gonna break it down again inside the lecture. I'll also give you guys a um, subnetting chart so you can kind of go through this and then double check and double check your work. You can either do it from right to left, like I did it, um, where you just double. So okay, 25 is 128, 24 is 128 plus 128. Uh, 23 has to be 256 plus 256, which is 512, and you keep on going, or you can do 2 to the 10th power. Either or is going to give you the exact same answer. So, um, since we did this, now we solve for hosts, now we got to solve for subnets. So, let's go ahead and get into that. We solve for hosts, we figured out how to convert from decimal to binary. Now, we're going to actually figure out how to solve for subnets and how many networks we can actually have on our network. All right, so we can have the main network, then we have subnetworks underneath that network. So we figured out how many devices we can fit on every network, which was how many? How many devices could we fit on a network with a slash 25? How many devices? Perfect. 20, 126 devices. 126 devices is how many devices we could fit on a network with a CIDR of a slash 25. Now we're gonna figure out how many sub-networks can we actually create, okay? So, a little bit more involved than the host. Remember, if it's in the last octet with the host, all we gotta do is take away two from the last bit value that was turned on. This one is a little bit more involved. So, 
already wrote out the bit values for you guys. And this is something new. These are the classes of IP addresses, the classes of IP addresses. So a class A IP address is any IP address where the first octet is from 1 to 126. And by default, it has 8 bits that are turned on. Okay? Then you got a class B IP address. A class B IP address is any IP address that starts from 128 to 191 and by default has 16 bits turned on. It has 16 bits that are turned on. A class C IP address is any IP address that starts with 192 all the way up to 223 and it has 24 bits on by default. 24 bits on by default. There are other classes of IP addresses, but this is going to be the main objective, the main thing that we're going to be worrying about on the test. So we're just going to look at these uh, class A, B, and C. So, second with what we had before, we're going to use the exact same IP address, exact same CIDR, and figure out how many subnets can we get from this. So the IP address was uh, 1, it was 171.168. Dot sixteen dot one thirty with a cider of twenty five. All right. So first thing we have to do when we're solving for subnets, the first thing you have to do is figure out what class of IP address is this. Starts with one seventy one. So what class would that fit inside? Perfect. This is a class B IP address. This is a class B. IP address. So by default, it's class B and only has 16 bits that are turned on. Only 16 bits that are turned on. So we have to subnet from a CIDR of 16 to a CIDR of 25. We're going to do that right now. So since we know it's a class B, we know that it has 16 bits on by default, right? So the first octet is completely full. That's 8 bits. The second octet is completely full. That's 16 bits. So by default, these first two octets are completely filled, right? So 16 by default, but they subnetted it to a slash 25. Instead of having 16 bits on, it has 25 bits that are actually on. So how many bits? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight. How many bits do we have to borrow from the host portion so we can turn 16 into 25? What do we have to add to 16 to make 25? Perfect. So we got to add nine bits or borrow nine bits from the host portion to get 25 bits, 25 bits. Okay. So one way you can do it, you can do 2 to the ninth, 2 to the ninth power, or instead of going from right to left, you can go from left to right. Because remember, the network portion always starts on the left, the host portion always starts on the right. So, left to right. So, we want to borrow 9 bits from here, right? So, we can start from here and just go over, and all we have to do is just double. Boom, 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 boom. Whatever number comes before, we just add it to the next number. So it would be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. So this would be 256. That's only 8 bits. Only 8 bits. So we have to go over into the last octet and borrow one more bit if we go over one more time 256 plus 256 is 512 so the answer is 512 sub nets so cautionary uh, tail game for sub nets you do not take away two for sub nets you do not take away two for subnets, you do not take away two. Don't take away two, all right? For subnets, you do not take away two. Just remember that. Don't take away two for subnets. This is 512 subnets, 
and we can get 128, excuse me, 126 devices per subnet. So, so far, we figured out how to convert from decimal to binary, um, how to solve for hosts, how to solve for subnets. Now we're going to get into subnet mass and host range, and then we'll be done. All right, gang, now we're going to actually get into solving for a host range. So we figured out how many hosts, how many subnets, how to convert decimal to binary, but now we're going to actually figure out what IP address is going to actually assign to the devices. All right, so I know I got 126 hosts, but what IP addresses can I actually assign to those hosts? All right, so to make it real simple, use the same IP address, 171.168.16.130 slash 25. All right, so the first thing the first thing that we have to do is figure out what our increment is. All right, the first thing we have to do is figure out what our increment is. All right, so since we got a slash 25, we already know that we're gonna be in the last octet. All right, we're gonna be working in the last octet. The number we're gonna be concerned about is this number right here. All right, so how do we figure out how our networks increment? How do we figure out how our networks increment? So the signer once again plays a vital Roll. What did we say the bit value that represents the 25th bit? What bit value represents the 25th bit? Perfect. The 128th bit value represents the 25th bit. So our networks are incrementing by 128. Okay? So it'll look something like this. Our first network is going to be, oh man, that up a little bit. <laughs> Our first network is going to be 171.168.16.0. We're trying to find a network that this will fit in. We're trying to find a network that 171.168.16.130 will fit in. It won't fit in the dot zero network, all right? So, we know that our increment is 128. So what do we think our next network is? Perfect. Our next network is gonna be 171.168.16.128. That's our next network. Our network is incrementing by 128, so our next network has to be 128. Alright, so we're trying to find a network that 130 would fit into. We're trying to find a network that 130 would actually fit into. Alright, so let's just go to the next network. So 128, what would our next network be? Hmm. 171, 168. That's 16, that 256. So let's figure out and add up or figure out these spaces in between, okay? So our first network is 171, 168, that's 16.0. That is our network ID. Remember one of the things we had to take away for hosts? That is the actual network. These are the actual network IDs, all right? So 171.168.16.0. Okay, what is the range for the dot zero network? What is the range for the dot zero network? That's what we're going to figure out right now. The range is going to be from 1 to 126. The broadcast, which is another number we had to take away, is going to be dot 127. So, remember, when we actually added this up, slash 25, how many hosts could you get? 126. That's why that's like that, okay? So, the network ID is dot zero. The range, the stuff that I can actually apply to the devices is going to be dot one to dot 126. My broadcast address is going to be dot 127, okay? So, will dot 130 fit in that range? Nope. So, we got to go one more. 
So for the dot 128 network, it's going to be from 129 to 254 with a broadcast of 255. All right, so the network ID 128, the range 129 to dot 254, broadcast dot 255. Will dot 30 fit inside of, excuse me, will dot 130 fit inside of 129 to 254? Perfect. Exactly. So, going all the way back to the beginning, if none of this stuff was here and it asked you, what is the subnet ID, broadcast address, and the range that this IP address belongs to, what would the answer be? The subnet ID would be subnet sub ID, that's what we'll say. Sub ID would be dot 128. That would be the network that it belongs to. So that would be dot 128. What about the broadcast? What would the broadcast be? Broadcast would be 255. Dot 255. Then the actual range of IP addresses that I can assign would be from dot 129 to dot 254. Bam. So we just figured out how to actually figure out what is the range, what are the IP addresses that I can actually assign to the devices on my network. Last but not least, let's do subnet mass. All right, gang, so last but not least, we're going to solve for subnet mass. We're going to solve for subnet mass, okay? So just a brief review. The IP address is your actual address on the network. The subnet mass is what network you actually belong to. All right, it kind of tells, okay, this is where this guy goes, where it's supposed to be, so on and so forth. So, so far, we figured out how to convert from decimal to binary, solve for host, solve for subnet mass, figure out host range, and now we're going to do a subnet mass. This would be, I think this is going to be probably the easiest thing to figure out, or the easiest thing to figure out. So, um, this is going to be the last thing I'm going to put on your plate. Then I'll have you guys um, run through a couple different exercises. And like I said, as many times you need to watch this video, watch it because you may not get it the first time, may not get it the second time, but eventually when it clicks, it clicks and you'll be good. All right, so we're going to keep the same IP address. Uh, it was 171.168.1.1. Thirty with a cider of twenty-five. As always, remember your bit values: one twenty-eight, sixty-four, thirty-two, sixteen, eight, four, two, and one. All right. So, with that being said, the easiest way to figure this out. All right. The easiest way to figure this out is just adding the bit values up that are on. All right. All of these bit values, if you add them all up, they'll always equal 255, no matter what. They'll always equal 255. So the subnet mass looks something like the IP address, I meaning it has four octets, and all you have to do is just add up the bit values that are on. For example, if we got a slash 25, right, that means that the first octet, all the bits are on, right? So if all the bits are on, in the subnet mass, the first octet looks just like this, 255. Bam, we got a slash 25, first two bits, or first uh, octet has to be on, so that's eight bits. So what about the second octet? Are all the bits on there? Perfect, because that's eight, 16. We try to get to 25. So the second octet is 255 as well. Trying to get to slash 25, first octet is eight, second octet is 16, third octet is 24, so we try to get to 25, that means that the third octet is completely on as well. So all eight bits are on, so it's going to be 255. Now, since we're trying to get to slash 25, if we got 8, 16, 24, how many bits are on in the last octet? One. Perfect. So only one bit on. And we always go from left to right. So the 128th bit is the 25th bit, so the subnet mass looks just like this. This is the subnet 
mask. Bam. So this is the IP address. Subnet mask is 255-255-205.128. How do we get that? We just got that by adding up all the bit values that were turned on. All right. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to head over to a site called, um, erase this, a site called subnettingquestions.com. Subnettingquestions.com. Now, if you gotta watch this video a couple more times, that's fine. I'm gonna go through the lecture a couple more times, that's cool too. But I want you to go over to subnettingquestions.com and there'll be like a plethora, a bunch of different scenarios that you guys can go through to get more familiar with these formulas. Subnettingquestions.com. So if you head over there, now like me, they're not gonna break it down and show you what, or how they got the answer, but they'll show you the answer. And it'll be a bunch of different um, questions. So the one question I ask you about hosts, one question I ask you about subnets, one question I ask you about range. And then if you go through that, a couple of those every day, by the time the test comes around, you'll be super comfortable with it. Now, this is the whole thing, gang. I went through this, broke this down, because it's good to know, great to know. Is this going to be the reason that you pass or fail the test? Uh, not so much. Not so much. So I just want you guys to be okay at this. You don't have to be experts. Just feel comfortable with it. Just feel comfortable enough that if this comes up, that it won't completely shake your confidence for the rest of the questions. Okay? So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let's go ahead and get back to the lecture.